welcome back to my channel. Uh, today we are partnering with Creative Fabrica to make a super cute in the hoop project. So I will show you what that is later on in the video. Um, for now, I'm just going to show you a little bit about Creative Fabrica's website. Creative Fabrica's website um, has tons of different things that you can pick from. They have fonts, they have graphics, they have embroidery files, they have tons of freebies um, that they give away every week. Uh, beautiful, beautiful embroidery files that you can access uh, weekly for free or tons and tons of embroidery patterns that you can download for purchase. As you can see, they are always on sale, like wonderful prices, and they stitch out great. So, you can also get a subscription to Creative Fabrica to access unlimited access to everything on their website for $29 a month. But if you use my link, you will receive 30% off of Creative's web uh, Creative Fabrica's website. Unlimited access to everything on their website for only $20, $30 a month versus the $29 that you would pay if you just went through the website by itself. So if you want to save 30% and have unlimited access to Creative Fabrica's website, make sure you click my link in the description. Okay guys, we're at my table. I got my hoop um, for this in the hoop cat stuffy. The only thing you really, you're really gonna need is your hoop, of course. I have tearaway stabilizer in here. Um, I have some black velvet fabric. It's this fabric I've had forever um, that I've used for various projects. And I have a lint roller mainly because it's velvet. Um, so it gets fuzzy. I got some fabric scissors to cut my fabric. And other than that, all you're gonna need is your design and your thread. My thread's on my machine, of course. Um, this is a eight, please don't mind if you hear tiny footprints over my head of my children running everywhere. But anyway, um, this is the eight by 12 hoop. This pattern is seven by 12. Um, that's the largest that it will go. You don't have to make it this big. I just, you know, want it to. I'll give it to the kids and they can have a cat until they learn to keep their rooms clean to earn a one. But anyway, <laughs> um, it comes in five by seven and six by 10. So those are the three sizes that the pattern comes in. So, um, right now I'm going to cut my fabric into a big enough piece to fit my hoop. Um, I'm gonna float this. So as you see, I already have my stabilizer hooped and um, I'm not gonna lay it in. I can actually, it's gonna put a, a tack down stitch down first. I'm already have my design loaded on my thumb drive into my machine and, um, well actually it's not loaded into my machine, but it's on my thumb drive. So I will show you guys me loading it, but um, you can add a name to this if you want. Um, I did. I don't know if I got that big enough. Wait a minute. Make sure we don't get it big enough. That's a little too small. All right. Cut it all right here. I don't mind my ragged cutting going on right here. It's not going to matter because we're going to cut this out. Once it's out of the hoop, and of course it sheds everywhere. That's the lovely thing about the velvet. It's everywhere. All over my table. Thank goodness for lint rollers. Um, so it'll fit nicely in my hoop. And I don't have to worry about that salvage part because we're gonna cut that off anyway. Um, you're also going to need your applique scissors as soon as I find mine. Um, but yeah, so you can always use the little tiny ones or, um, the big metal ones that I have and you'll see those later in the video. But yeah, so I'm going to take this over to the machine and we can get started. All right, we're over here at my machine. Um, like I said, I have my file loaded on my thumb drive 
So I'm just going to uh, load it into my machine. You press file and you find the design on your thumb drive and you're gonna load it to your machine. Now I go into my machine and find that kitty. The kitty. And that's the little name that I put on it. It says Knox. I don't know if anybody gets that reference, but it will be a black cat. And yeah, so I thought Knox was cute. So I'm um, going to hit OK. Oh. <laughs> Trial and error, y'all. Well, not really error. My hoop, my embroidery status is still locked from the last. I just did a cap uh, a few days ago. So let me unlock my embroidery status first, then go back into my machine, page two, to my kitty design, and okay. So it's now loaded, but I still have the small hoop from the cap. So I have to go into design set and I have to change my hoop from the cap. We are using, I think this is the D-ring. Yeah, the 310 by 210. And maybe okay, it's moving, it's doing its thing. Okay, so we still need to be sideways so that um, our kitty will actually fit in the hoop. So I'm gonna go here and I think it's this one and hit okay. Yep, perfect. Perfect little kitty in the hoop now. Okay, um, I will say when you guys are setting this up in your embroidery software, if you do add a name, um, there are seven steps to this cat. It's pretty simple. It's seven colors, like that's it. And most of the colors are the tack down, the, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, the placement, then the tack down of the outside then um, it'll do you know all of the details on the inside. And then the last one is the final stitch that goes all the way around, but it stops right here to leave that little opening right there so that you can stuff it and then you can flip it, stuff it, and then you'll you know ladder stitch it um, or machine, machine sew it back if that's your the way you wanna do it, glue it, uh, stitch witchery, however you wish to close it back up. Um, you would do that. So when you add this name in here, you're going to add it into step, I put it as step six. There's like I said, there's eight steps. So I made this step six. So it's gonna do the tack down, I mean placement, then tack down. It'll do the eyes, nose, ears, paws. Then it'll do the name. Then it'll, it'll do its little feet, little things here. And then it'll do its final stitch. So make sure you move that name into your um the middle you know before the last it'll be fine as long as it's before the last final tack down stitch make sure you move it in your embroidery software before the final tack down stitch um for the back of the fabric so um yeah so we're good to go so i can hit escape and come out of here and now we're into our hoop and we can program our colors okay so our colors have them written down you can print them out um you can print out the sheet from your embroidery software if you have so with pro if you have um in brilliance i have so with pro but um either way you can print out if you want to but ain't, anybody got time for that um so i just write them down for most of the time if it's like you know not a lot um i was also mistaken i went back when i was uh, writing everything down there is no placement stitch it's only like the first tack down stitch so you do have to have your fabric in the hoop so much dust. I'm going like, to roll that later. But you do have to have your fabric in the hoop first when it makes the outline of the cat. So just be mindful of that. Um, so yeah, um, to save on constant color changes, even though this is a multi-needle machine and it can, you know, change threads easily than, you know, more easier than if I had like a single needle. But I used to do this with my single needle too. Um, I do a lot of the placement and stitches and things in the same color. So it's a lot of white. Um, so I'm going to set my placement stitch as white. Then the details after are going to be white. Um, I had picked two different pinks that I wanted to do. So I have to figure out. I have my tree up here numbered. 
so it's easy for me to figure out what is what. So, um, I'm going to do, I think the first pink is the face. So I want to do that in my lighter pink, which is number six. Um, then white again. And then the next pink is going to be like the ears and the details. And I want that to be my darker pink. And I believe that is number eight so eight and the name is going to stitch out in purple which is number seven and then white for the little whiskers that's on our ears and then the final placement stitch because again it doesn't matter it's going to be cut out it's going to be flipped out um flipped inside out so you're not going to see that i'm going to make that white too since this is a black fabric so the last stitch will be white and that's the last one um, and I'm going to change this setting. This setting is usually when you have like something that goes straight through. If you have a full sew out, then you would leave it on AA, which is automatic, automatic. But this is an applique. Basically, it's in the hoop, but it's, it functions the same as applique. So I'm going to switch this to automatic and manual. And that way it will stop after every um, stitch. Now, I'm going to switch. I'm going to put it in automatic manual. Well, no, I'm gonna leave it just because I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to mess up. But what you can do if you are paying attention and you're gonna sit here the whole time is you can put this in automatic manual for the first stitch. When it goes and does its placement stitch and you cut everything else out, you can come back into this um, setting and you can switch it back to automatic, automatic, and then it will run the rest of these steps. But you gotta catch it so that it will actually uh, on this last stitch here. It will. You have to turn it back to automatic manual. Now, I wonder if I can try something because um, little Alessia Co, um, when she did her video with her uh, MT1501, she pressed this F button here after every um, everything that needed to stop. She put the F afterwards. So I wonder, let's, you know, we're, we're doing some testing here while we're recording this video. I'm going to press my one because I'm gonna need it to come out and I'm gonna press this F button so that it will stop and bring the hoop out. I'm gonna leave it on automatic, automatic for the rest of them. And then I'm gonna go to this one. Once it does this one, then I need my hoop to come out again because I have to put another piece of fabric on top as the back of the cat. So I'm gonna do that. And we're gonna see how it goes. <laughs> we're gonna learn something with you guys. and. If it ends up terrible, then I'll just make another one. It is what it is. It's all part of learning, right? So I'm going to hit OK because none of us are perfect. We all had to learn to get here. And so let's learn a little bit today. We'll see what happens. So, all right. Um, I have my fabric already down, like I said. And I am going to run, press start on my machine and let you guys watch it do its thing. Alright, I'm going to trace my design, just to make sure everything's going to fit in my hoop good. Alright, I'm good, I'm going to move this over just a touch, just so my, uh, that salvage, that salvage edge over there doesn't uh, get into my design. And we're going to start. to stop because <laughs> number one is black not white sorry y'all hold on one sec that is two f yep then two and then two so i'm just changing all of my ones to twos because one is black not uh, white so i'm gonna hit okay and then so you can see i'm going to hit this and all I did was went, I went back into this thing. I stopped it and went back into this thing. So just so people who know who have this machine, if you start out with the wrong color, it's easy to stop the machine and change the color mid stitch. Um, if you had a design, which I did for Easter, where the designs are grouped, like this design is grouped, um, like the face is all grouped together. But if you wanted that to be different colors, 
Um, once it did one part of it, you could stop the machine, change the that color to a different color, and then start the machine again. So I did it and it worked well. Um, but because I just changed this thread, I'm going to go ahead and press my scissors button. So it will cut that thread so it won't drag over to the next. Um, and then I am going to, I'm not going to backstitch. Like I'm not going to go back and, um, cause I can change this here and go backwards. But for me, it doesn't really make sense since it's a, it's a placement stitch and nobody's going to really, nobody's going to see it. So I'm not worried about it. So I'm just gonna press start again. And it's gonna switch. As you can see, it stitched out my design and then it stopped and it brought my, my hoop forward. So now I can keep everything else, all of his facial features and the name, I can keep it on automatic automatic without having to go in and stop the machine and changing it to automatic automatic um, because I don't be paying attention like that, y'all. Uh, that's why I got a multi needle. But <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, now we get to cut this out to reveal our little kitty body shape. Okay, now we're gonna cut our little kitty out with my handy dandy applique scissors here. all cut out his front part at least this will be the front of his body this is where his face and his ears and all those little things will go um, and then once we get to that final stitch where it stitches out like his whiskers um, then we would use another piece of fabric and cover everything and it will, that final tack, sti tack down stitch will leave a gap here for us to flip him inside out. Now I will say, don't make the same mistake that I made. When you cut this out, leave a little, like from this base piece, leave where the opening's gonna be. It doesn't show you here, but you can kind of gauge where the opening will be from the file. So just leave a piece of fabric probably about this long here. And I'm going to do that when I lay the top, the back part on top. I'm going to leave a little gap there so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. But that way, when you flip it inside out, it will make it easier for you to um, seal that closed. However you're going to seal it, I'm probably going to hot glue it because, uh, yeah, it's fast <laughs> and permanent on fabric. So now let's put this back on our machine so it can stitch out all the rest of our cute details.
Okay, all of our design has stitched out and now the only thing we need to do is cover the last uh, the last step. So I got my another piece of fabric and we're gonna put it so that the right sides are touching. So our wrong side will be facing up. And I'm gonna lay that in our hoop and it's gonna stitch out its final stitch and we should be ready to take it off the uh, machine, cut it out, fill it, and stitch it up. that open area I was talking about that um, you're gonna stuff the kitty with so I'm just going to unhoop him and again I use tear away so I should easily tear away Okay, now we can turn them off. And again, I'm going to leave extra here. Okay, our kitty is all cut out. And now we can flip him inside out through the hole. Okay, I've been turning him out. I got legs, feet. I got one more arm. I will say the easiest way so far I've found is to use tweezers. The opening for the arm is kind of small, so and the paw is big. Um, so it makes it a little difficult to get the legs and arms through. It could just be this uh, thick velvet that I'm using too. That plays a role in it as well. So, I'm just going to keep grabbing out of here, trying not to put a hole in anything. Um, so, yeah, I'm just reaching in, grabbing and pulling it out. And I'll be right back because it's hard for me to see, like, hovering and looking over the camera and trying to keep you guys in frame. So, hold on one sec. Okay, I got most of the paw out. I'm going to go back in the hole with this, uh either this paintbrush or this stick. Push it out. So, my buddy hole. It's okay, I'll close it up. But, yeah. Here is our little kitty. And he's ready to be stuffed now. Okay, I got my polyfill here, and we're going to go back into the opening on the side and fill them up with some polyfill. Alrighty, our kitty is fluffy and cute and soft. And he's ready to be closed up. Like I said, um, this is his opening, which you can um, you can ladder stitch that shut. 
I, if you want to squeeze them in your you know, sewing machine, you can do that. Uh, I am going to hot glue him. So my hot glue gun is over here. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue in here. And that's how I fix his hand, too, where I pop that hole. Stuff my stuffing down in there because I don't want that to get caught in my clothing. And, and we're going to close them up. Zhuzh them around a bit and he's good to go. He's so cute. Yay! All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching and tuning in while we made Little Knox here. Um, thank you so much for to Creative Fabrica for, uh, well, for partnering with me in this video and sending me this design um, to test out for you guys. So if you would like to make this little cute cat stuffy yourself, the link is going to be in the description below and again if you would like to have a subscription to unlimited access to all of creative fabrica's uh, website fonts graphics embroidery designs i think they have quilt designs sewing design patterns if you want unlimited access to everything on their website um, make sure you click the link down below to get the subscription at 30 percent off because we love to save money so until next time, guys, you guys have a great day on purpose and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. You love the cat? Yeah. Yeah. She stole the cat. <laughs>